Caution, this is an M-rated game, so the Magical Chicken insists that viewer discretion is advised. It's time for the Fallout 4 review for the PS4. While not my first go around with Bethesda, this is the first Fallout game in the franchise I've played. And yes, this is certainly a game to add to my I wish I hadn't waited so long to play library, so let's see why. Set in a heavily influenced real world 1950s atomic age, the year is 2077 in the Boston, Massachusetts region. After you pick your character and define their physical traits, you, your spouse, and your infant son Sean are hurried into an underground vault to bypass the nuclear destruction and fallout that has hit the region. Unbeknownst to them, they are cryogenically frozen and only wait to see a mysterious team kidnap Sean, kill your spouse, and refreeze your character. You awaken some time later and re-emerge on the surface only to be welcomed to a wasteland where it's now up to you to investigate Sean's kidnapping. This is an open world RPG that mainly focuses on FPS gameplay, but you aren't forced to play this way. First of all, you can set the camera to an awkward third person viewpoint, something that I just can't get used to, and secondly, guns aren't your only weapons as melee options are available. That's the beauty of this game, there are so many different ways to play, all thanks to the skill tree which is actually a pamphlet your character has. This is where you choose how you want to play the game. There are seven base traits, each one yielding specific abilities, both passive and active. Conveniently labeled special, these traits include strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intellect, agility, and luck. Some are pretty self-explanatory, while others such as charisma and luck may be a bit cryptic at first glance. A key defining factor of charisma is how well your character can influence other NPCs in terms of bartering and speech checks which I'll get into a bit later. Luck is just that, how lucky your character is, with defining factors like how fast your critical meter fills up, or more specific areas like randomly gaining a huge boost of XP for anything you do. Some traits work well with others, and it's so much fun combining complementary abilities. One of the biggest game mechanics is the Vault Tech Assisted Targeting System, or VATS for short. By holding down L1, you can slow down time around you and target specific body parts of enemies. Each target will show a percentage of how likely you are to hit that area in relation to your current distance and perception level of your character. Each time you hit an enemy in VATS, your critical meter will fill up, and once full, you can perform a guaranteed critical hit no matter the current percentage. If you don't want any help, you aren't forced to use VATS, but I think it makes the game more fun and in some situations is borderline needed if you want to survive, especially when aiming with a control controller is not the most comfortable way of playing. Plus, if you're able to take down an enemy with any VAT shot, a slow motion animation will play out of your target being put down and sometimes explode. The map isn't a barren wasteland. Yes, there's destruction all around, but resources can be quite plentiful unless you're playing on survival mode, but that's beside the point. You can find food, water, medicinal and chemical supplies, weapons, ammunition, and all sorts of quote unquote junk materials you can break down to help you build other things. See a combination wrench? You can use a small gear inside to act as a general gear you need for weapon modification. Consuming food and water will increase your health, but most will also increase your radiation intake. Speaking of which, health isn't the only thing you need to monitor, as radiation damage can also ruin your day. While certain radiation remedies are available, you can also don specific armor pieces or sets to help reduce radiation damage. You can even find hazmat suits which offer supreme radiation protection, but at the cost of physical damage resistance. NPCs play a huge role in the main objective, but also in all the side quests available. One aspect of NPCs is that a select few can become your companion. You are welcome to explore on your own, but I usually like having a companion with me as their unique dialogue can enhance the overall experience. Having a companion isn't limited to just having an extra gun and backpack around. You can give them specific weapons to use and armor to wear, and depending on your actions and responses to other NPCs, they will begin to gain or lose affinity with you. If they witness you perform enough actions to their liking, they will begin to like you more and more, and exclusive dialogue conversations will come up. If you're able to increase their affinity to the max level, your character will gain a unique bonus, such as with Piper, her ability lets me gain double XP for every new location I find and successful speech checks. This is a key area of gameplay that I found to be so fun. When talking with NPCs, you'll get to respond with four different speech options. The options are always the same in terms of one is generally optimistic, one is sarcastic or neutral, one will carry the conversation a bit further with details about the topic, or if you just want to be a jerk, there's always the pessimistic option. 
During specific conversations, speech checks will show up as one or more of the dialogue choices. The color of the speech check can be yellow, orange, or red, which indicates how difficult it will be to be successful with this option. Unless you've leveled up your charisma a good amount, or at least have boosted your charisma through clothing or other means, most speech checks will fail. If you succeed, however, you'll be rewarded with XP, and the remaining conversation might be steered in a different direction, which can ultimately lead you to different quest results. I've played this game about 10 times now, and charisma is one of the stats I level up quickly before the others, because being successful with speech checks is something I find to be so fun. Now even though charisma is a fun stat to play with, don't neglect stats that actually help you in combat. Weapon and armor modifications are essential to coming out on top in battles. Plus, finding out what you can make with your gear is really fun as well. If you want to become a walking tank, just put on a suit of power armor and go to town with the local super mutants. Careful, you're not actually invincible, and honestly I find it to be more fun to run around without power armor. One combat aspect I found pretty interesting was an enemy could sometimes cripple your limbs if you're hit with a specific attack. One quick dose from a stim pack will make you right as rain, but a crippled arm could mean you could no longer aim a weapon, or a broken leg means you couldn't run away. Don't worry chum, you can perform the same attacks on your foes, but quick body and headshots are usually the way to go. For a game that was made at the time of this review, 9 years ago, the graphics look great with quite a bit of attention to detail. Glitches are present, however, but everything considered, most of them don't play that much of a role in hindering your gameplay, and actually, some can be quite humorous. The game is packed with side quests. Honestly, you could go for days, if not weeks, just doing side quests alone. Ignoring side quests is not suggested, as you'll need a lot of XP to unlock many skills. Side quests aren't the only thing that give you experience, though. As I said before, discovering new locations will net you XP, but also every enemy you kill will do the same, as well as successfully picking locks, hacking computer terminals, or even making any kind of modification to your gear. One of the main quest lines has you rebuilding the community by getting small settlements to join the Minutemen. Once a settlement agrees to join, and as long as you have the resources, you can build it up with various construction fabrications or pieces, where each piece you set down will also give you a small amount of XP. There aren't many things I find at fault with this game. Sure, the graphical glitches can remove your sense of immersiveness, but at least for me, there's not much to complain about. The only major negative experience I had was with the quest glitch. So here, I'm shooting a bunch of enemies with a minigun, but I die soon after. After reloading the most recent save point, the game tells me to get onto this aircraft, which I do. Then it tells me to get onto this aircraft to restart the mission, but it won't let me. I tried approaching it from different angles, but it wouldn't let me begin the mission. This aircraft is supposed to be on the ground for me to begin, but for some reason it's up here. Resetting the game allowed me to restart the mission, but from up here, where normally you begin the mission on the ground. This was quite annoying, but thankfully not game breaking. I've always enjoyed the apocalyptic survival genre, and while the default setting for this game technically isn't survival, I still highly enjoy what the game has to offer. Even after many different playthroughs, there are still abilities I've yet to unlock and side quests I've never even attempted, which helps keep my interest in coming back to it. And while I'm not including the paid DLC into the score, nor will I talk about the many mods available as I mainly just want to focus on the core game, just know they increase the overall gameplay in your favor. I'm super hopeful for Fallout 5, whenever it releases, but for now, I'll still have a great time exploring the Commonwealth again and again. This game gets a 4.75 out of 5, with the title of Epic. <laughs>